Ooh. Okay, so yeah. Enemies. Let's make a new one. Um so I draw this. Accidentally, they look a little bit this looks a little bit Star Trek, maybe. But anyway, it's a new type of enemy. Doesn't have a weapon. And I call it the runner. And it's going to run. And move around move around the screen. So so far we have this enemy, the robot, uh, that, it, that works in a in a fixed path, uh, like the slime. The big difference that they have different height. So I guess, although I make you know the jump is pretty high, and you have full air control and stuff, so it's not too difficult to jump. But See, I, I touch it, so that's the difference between the two enemies. Then I have the shooter that shoots uh, as a blaster and it blasts or whatever. And the next one I want to to add is going to be the runner. Um, that is going to run freely because, it, well, it's not going to follow a fixed pattern. Um, so I think I'm going to implement a very simple state machine and make it so it looks and feels intelligent, but it's not going to be very much as long, you know. Obviously, you can predict the pattern and see what it's going to do, but um, the idea is that, you know, you need to be careful because it can go up and potentially down. I'm not completely sure about that because I have implemented this idea in other games before, but um, those games had a different type of platforming. So I don't know how it's going to play really because in here, so in previous games that I have used this idea, you can go up you can go a platform down so you need to find a gap to you know to let the, the character fall, fall um so that makes the uh, the type of enemy i want to implement i guess easier to predict because it's never going to go down and now i made the player be you know able to go platform down so i guess the enemy should be able to do that as well we'll see cool so i've done less stuff than the last time i was working on a new enemy but in a way it's going to be easy because i mean it's just the same as the robot and the shooter by the way so at the end here and I said runner is probably as good as any name and it's going to be in which corner is this zero one hundred and twenty so zero and then here one hundred and twenty So you can replace that and that should be it because it's basically it's the same. Um yeah, I I follow the same style in, in all the characters really. So three frames for each direction and that means that it has two sets, one for left, one for right, and is standing a step standing the other step and crazy right so this is going to be the runner and let's add a runner here for example no not here so well, first of all let's 
Let's move the shooter out of the way. This is gonna need to be annoying. It starts shooting. And let's put a runner here. So let's go to runner. And it doesn't have special properties or anything. Because I'm not using that in this game. So now we need to be able to load that from the JSON file. Um, so it's going to be a runner entity. Oh, what happened? I wrote the precision. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, so, aha, this is going to be a little bit of a problem, I think. Because this is because I updated NeoBeam yesterday. I didn't try it with this. So this is a problem with oh that was unexpected and it's going to get in the way of today's session. Oh. So so I believe this is a problem with um so scale Haskell language server. I believe. So, so there should be issues here, right? Hmm. Oh man, this is terrible. Mm -mm. Well, I don't know what to do about this, really. Um, mm -mm. So, if this when I save, and it has to be the, mm, it has to be the. Haskell, Haskell language server is sending some different, some stuff that is not really. Oh man, what can I do now? Uh, should I downgrade NeoBeam for this session and then try to fix it offline? Uh, because there's nothing really here that suggests. Okay, I can try something. Just not going to help, but let's do this because it could be something else. It could be another plugin. All right. <laughs> it even makes things worse. Fine. So let's try one last time. One last time. No, it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to downgrade very quickly. So um, now, where do I have this installed? So let's get the previous version. I was. I didn't expect this. Well, I didn't test it properly, but. Um, yeah, it's very quick. We get the previous release and that's it. So, releases here. This one. Actually, I tried a few things, but I, I checked the change log, but I was not expecting this to not work, really. <sighs> okay. So, it was A2, the previous one, right? So let's do this. Let's 
スです。うーん。いや。うん。タイトルがな。OK。So at least we can keep going. Now we look at the problem. We must solve it later. So, runner entity, um, which is going to be the same as this, right? So, this is a lot of boilerplate, but I don't know how to do it differently. I decided to go this way, and well, it's not a lot. It's a little bit. So run into the direction left. There you go, done. So now in types, we need to add a new type, which is no, it's going to be type enemy. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, let me think. But it's going to have uh, its own data, right? It's going to have. Okay, let's 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 bootstrap the enemy. For example, like a robot. And then we can go from there. Yeah, because I'm not sure. I mean we definitely need to keep some state uh to make decisions. Because I mean if it goes to the edge of the platform, it should fall down. It shouldn't turn it shouldn't turn around. But when it gets to the wall what do we do? Do we turn around or we jump? So we turn around, we jump, but we don't. That we go to the lower platform as long as we can. So we can check that. But we need to make a decision, right? So instead of making it move when it hits the wall, um, what I have implemented in other games is that you can keep a state and after he ha the enemy has gone and hit the wall twice, for example, then we can decide to go up or down. We could also, we could also track we're going up or down and then decide, are we going to, you know, we could say, go up until you can't go up anymore or go down until you can't down anymore. That could make up an interesting behavior, right? So let's just start with the robot. This is our base um, entity or this type. Um, we can go from there. Um, okay, so we need here and we have the runner. And then now we can go to runner and make a quick change. <clears throat> Sorry, just wait a moment. And this should have the runner already. Uh, because it doesn't have data. And then in entities, we need to add the code to spawn the enemy. So, I mean the robot, so let's do robot, so it's going to be run an entity, x, y direction, and that's it, uh, it's not robot, runner, and also, oh yeah, I need to import that, so, here, it's going to Okay, so it's kind of okay. Now in here is going to be the runner and not the robot. Okay, so this should make the enemy appear and run the stuff. 
actually I didn't try the sprite animation or anything so I don't know if it's going to look the way I expect but it should be okay yeah I mean it runs it's not it's not too bad is it I'm gonna make a full screen to say bigger Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's slightly different from the shooter. Do we have a shooter around, or I just removed the shooter completely? Yeah, there's a shooter. Ooh, that shooter is flipping. All right, and everything should work because it's just a robot, right? Cool. So that adds the runner. Um. What else? What else? What else can we do? Okay, we need to change the data. So now the hardest thing of software engineering. How do we call this? Well, it's going to be runner data. We know that, but what is going to be the values? Um, okay, no, not really. Let's do it incrementally, shall we? Um, so, so let's get all the robot out of the way. Let's put the runner here, and let's see if the stuff I did with gravity it really pays off, or if I made a mistake with the design. So basically. Mm, There's a stuff here that needs to be changed, which is that not blocked. This is the one that is checking for gravity. <clears throat> oh, sorry, checking for gravity. It's checking that there is floor in front of the the character. If I remove this, actually, uh, it should be. All this, and we don't need that anymore. And no, I'm, I'm mistaken. Like this, okay. So so now. Now the runner should keep working even if there is no floor, right? Yeah, because it's not checking that there needs to be floor. Fine. So now we need to uh, in common here. Do I have something? Oh, yay! Apply gravity and update gravity. Which is the one? Yeah, this is one. It's update gravity. So, and I think it's just calling update gravity. Okay, how do we do this in the player? The player is the only one that is using the gravity at the moment. And I think what it does is this. So it basically it does composition. So um, what is the signature of this? Yeah, basically, uh, there's a gravity. Updates vertical, updates horizontal movement, updates the frame based on the controls. So I think I think what we need to do here is I think we're going we're going to do the same. 
So we can do exactly the same. So let's do that. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We touch. Okay. So this is not. Doesn't really need to be like that. Because if it touches the player, it doesn't need to play the frame. And everything else should be the same. So, okay, let's let's try that. We can do update movement, and then and then we pass the entity. So we can do update movement, update frame to E. So this should be the same. Actually, I probably should change that in all the characters then. So the difference is that if he hits, it doesn't update the frame, whilst the others update the frame, but there's no difference. Okay, so 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 let's fix that in the others, right? Because obviously they're making the same. So this update is here and there. So we just use the entity and then we're gonna say we're gonna say um today frame it move and that's it. Okay. So um, slime is that slime doing the same? Yeah, but it's different because the slime updates the slime frame, slime frame because it is actually different. The update frame because the slime has different size, so it has to have its own function. Um, update the slime frame, yeah, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't need the, the uh, uh, wait a minute, what did I do, what did I do, yeah, it's because it doesn't need the plug, uh, no, no, okay, so, I guess update the update, but we're going to use E, and yeah, that's right. And update the slime frame. It's using the entity already from here, and it returns an entity. Fine. There you go. And we don't need this. Okay, and then it's the shooter. And we're going to copy this one because the shooter is not a slime, is it? Okay, and uh, this one is different because yeah, this one is already doing what I'm doing now. Take hold down, day frame, and then day. Okay, cool. Okay, did I break everything? Let's see. Okay, slime, it does the same thing, that's fine. The robot, it does the same thing. We didn't change the shooter. And, and the runner we know already is what we want, right? Okay, so let's commit the improvement in this and this. So, yeah. 
Okay. So that's one thing. Could improve. Right. So we did the moment there. We did. We did the frame. And I think here we say we take gravity, and we need the is log function as a parameter. And that's it. That should give us uh, gravity. That's it, give us gravity. Let's see. So it's coming and it does. But, uh, and there's something I'm not completely sure I like. And it is that it, it fell forward. Maybe it should be, uh, well, it's not completely bad, is it? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I kind of prefer if there is no movement, if the gravity applies. Can we do that? So, can we tell if the gravity has updated the gravity? What is this? What is this? Oh, it's in the... Um, so, oh, current is E-gravity. Okay. So... Fine. So... Yeah, it makes sense. Because... When we are jumping as well, or moving down, we want it to be, you know, we want to do the vertical only. We don't want to move as well. So, and we don't want to update the frame. So we can do update gravity. Hmm, how do I do this? Um, I guess. I can split this a little bit. Touch then pure E, otherwise do, and then we can do. Oh, you know, so gravity updated. And then we can do if gravity updated. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, it was what was the name of that? Uh, gravity. What's going on? Gravity updated. It should be. Oh, because we need to pass the entity. Oh, my bad. All right. So, gravity data is an entity now. The gravity uh, 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 is not gravity off. Then, otherwise, then this. I'm doing like this. I'm not sure. Why do do I need IO here for this? I don't need IO. It's just that it's you I know it's not even IO. It's just because I like I want the sequence. So I only want to calculate the way gravity here. So yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We can do like this. So now we should fall. It should fall without 
move forward, right? Hello, Felipe, how you doing? Oh man, I was in Spain two weeks ago, but I couldn't, I didn't have time actually to call you and have a coffee, which is a shame. Okay, so I think it's okay. Um, I can be sure really about it looks like it could be getting a little bit further, right? Yeah, I think it's fine for now. It's fine. Slightly better than continuous movement. Um, hmm. Oh, I see what is the difference. It is because the player. Say, sí, la próxima vez que vaya para allá. Pero entre que no teníamos coche. Llevamos a mi padre de taxista prácticamente. No, no hubo tiempo para. No hubo tiempo para gran cosa. Mm, anyway, so the difference is that I think it is because mm, let's go back to the player. It's because the player moves faster, I think. It's because of this one. What's going on? What happened? Oh, because if I comment that, that is this one is not in use, but I'm not sure if I'm going to remove it, so let's try. I think the problem here is that the player moves double the speed. No, doesn't make any change. It moves faster, but it doesn't make it work any further. So that's not it. Well, what is the difference then? Hmm? Oh, the player is moving one pixel as well, each frame. Oh, no, I don't know. I mean, we can do it too. Just as a quick test. So that this one now should make the same effect as the player. And don't fall as close to the wall as it was. Yeah, but it looks awful. Anyway, I'm going to leave it like this for now. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so um let's add no in the types let's add the runner data and to start with we're going to count um how do we call this? When it hits the wall. I don't know. I don't want to, to call it flag. 
or something generally like that. Um, wall count. Uh, yeah, let's call it wall count. Okay, so now uh, the data is going to be that data, and it's going to start with no wall counts, right? And And every time we change direction here, wall count is going to be is going to increment one. Uh, oh no, that's okay. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is in in the in the data, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so for that, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So it has to be uh, that equals uh, run our data, and then we're going to pass n that one count plus one. Yeah, that's right. And then we got this because when we hit the wall on the left, it's going to be the same. And, and that's it really so the difference is going to be that when we hit wall we say if end that wall count I mean let's make it See, I don't like too much like that. Oh, because all right, I can I can do that now like this. But I really can't use wall count because then it's actually e. Okay, so mm -mm -mm -mm. I can use wall count. Oh no, I can use it. Okay, fine. There you go. Right? Uh, we can do this. Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make it clear. A little bit. Um, but it may not be either one we want to use so it's not correct i think i'm going to pick the other way and that's it all right okay so the difference now is that we're going to do if if n that wall count is bigger than two then we're going to jump. Otherwise, we do this. Right? Um, why is complaining? He's saying, wow, there is a redundant if. Oh, uh, yeah, because it's the same. Oh, so smart. Thank you. Okay, so if this is the case, for now we're going to set the runner data to zero. And actually, uh, 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 um, actually, uh, let me think. All right, so yeah, that's fine. When we jump, we reset the runner data. So we don't need to worry about uh okay but when we fall do we want to reset the runner data when we use the gravity maybe not we'll see about that 
Actually, another thing that could be interesting is that we could be making the render data random here. So sometimes after a jump, it could be jumping again. And we let's go. I'm going to change the direction for now because I think it's going to look interesting. But okay, so this is fine, but we need also to activate the jump. And let's see how the player is doing it because it's going to be the same. So, uh, which is the vertical, isn't it? So, there's a lot of things here that we don't need to worry too much about because um, this is doing, you know, Coyote time. Coyote, Coyote time. Uh, so, what we need to do here is simpler, right? So, we know that if we hit the wall, we are not jumping. So a lot of the checks that are happening here, we don't need to do it. The only thing we need to do is saying, and also we don't need to track jumping because that's something that is wrong. This is something that is wrong. So why all the entities don't need the jumping? That should be player data. So, uh, So the stuff that has to be player data should be player data. This is because I didn't think about it before using it. But anyway, so to jump, we need to set gravity going up and the jumping frame. And also, yeah, we can set the, the use the dust effect because it's cool. Um, so we can add it here. Uh, and let's make it look slightly nicer like this. So yeah, we turn around, gravity is up, jump frame, we add the dust, but it's not E, let's use end. And we don't need to jump anymore. Okay. So this looks okay, which is not really true. This is wrong, but for now, let's use it this and we can change it later and fix it because it's definitely wrong so and I will explain why it's wrong in a second it is wrong because because it's wrong we can we can jump willy nilly. We need to check that we can actually jump. And we are not doing it here. Because the player can jump anywhere, but it may not land on a platform. There is no platform. But the enemies should be jumping only when they can jump to the destination, which is not something we check in here. But it's okay because we are testing and and we can go from there. Uh, can we make this look nicer like this? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Better. All right. So let's put the end runner on a place where we can actually see jump around so this is perfect this place is perfect to actually test it and let's see what happens i think it's going to be about right maybe Okay, so that's one wall, two walls. It's not jumping. Oh, it is. Uh, 
all right that's kind of okay uh, oh because bigger than two is three right let's see now Oh, that didn't work. That one works. That one doesn't. Why not? Oh, because we didn't set the gravity up. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so one's to one side, looks to the other. It's clear that it can't really go up anymore. So it jumps and it goes down. Yeah, that's good. And I guess, depending where we put the runner, it will do better or worse, really. So that hits once, then it falls down, hits another time. Now it should turn around and jump. Yeah. And there you go. It goes away. Where are you going? Maybe I should call it Ooh. this jumper and not runner. So turn around, jump. Now let's make it a little bit slightly more interesting, right? So okay, so this is wrong. Let's fix the bit that is wrong first. So um, for example, let's create a situation where the runner shouldn't be jumping. For example, if we say that this part here is blocked, if this is blocked, it should not jump because it's not going to work. Um, so the gravity function will deal with that, but it's going to try anyway, and it's going to look funny. So I don't think you should be doing it. Right, so before we jump, uh, which is going to be just checking something here, right? Super easy. Um, let's take a look what the player it is doing. Well, the player is not checking anything, but it's going to be similar to this because what we're going to check is um, and okay, we can actually make a function. Um, in fact, I think there is potential here because uh, this looks pretty much the same, right? So we could have a function that is try jumping and we get an entity and it returns an entity actually it doesn't really need to yeah it needs to do that 
So try jumping. Let's see it's an entity. And then you can even use a guard here. And it will this look nicer. So if this is the case, right? Uh, try, ju try jump uh, or turn. Yes, that's a very good name, right? So, okay, this is no, it's not good. It's not what I want, but for now, it's going to be enough. And then. Otherwise, you turn, right? And here is going to be try jumping or turn and significant weight space sucks a little bit sometimes. Uh, what did just happen? Oh, because it's a new function. So, yeah, significant weight space. Guys, don't do it. Don't this because... Okay, so... Still not in the right alignment. Is it? So, it is... 5. See, it's not great, is it? And when you refactor by hand, it's going to be a pain. Anyway, so this is... This is okay, but... As it is, it only works with left. And we're going to use this as well in right. So... We can actually... So we know it's the same. Yeah. So we know we know it's the same. Um, so we can call it the same. The only difference is that... If and beer is... I wonder how many times I have done this. Maybe I should be saying just have a method called turn in here, right? So, uh, no, so turn if it's the right then dear left and left right uh, what are you complaining about it's not used well because it didn't explore that should be in types no it shouldn't be in types i agree with you haskell it should be in common. Right? Uh... Something like that. So now we go here and we can say turn, please. And turn, please. And I wonder if we have other places that we can use the same. Uh, so. If, yeah, but how 
it's going to look like. Something like that. Yeah, but I don't think we just do that simple as that. So that I don't think we can benefit from using turn. But if I see that, I, I, we will use it, of course. So now this is looking much better. Have a quick run just before. Uh, because it's straight jumping. So we need to check that we can actually jump, right? So that is correct. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Now it's moonwalking. Why is moonwalking? Ah, because we need to change the set. Well. Fine. Can do it like this. So it shouldn't won't work anymore. We know that one doesn't work. And that one works. Okay, so now... Um, and no is blocked, right? Um, and X is going to be aligned, but we don't care. I mean, I can do plus eight and Y minus one. Is that correct? Probably not, because looking at down, we checked. Oh, we checked two points because the player can move freely. All right, so I think this is fine. I mean, the only thing we need to check is that the space just over the head is free. It didn't try to jump, so it's working. He didn't try to jump, it's working. Hmm. No. Doesn't need to check. Yeah, because coincidentally, I mean if this so in the middle because it's always going to be aligned, right? When it goes to the wall. So if this space is free, uh is going to be able to jump even if the other bits are blocked. I think that's probably okay. Uh, yeah, it works. But no, but no, it, it just works. It's just fine. It really doesn't care. It doesn't care about all these things here. Cool, 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 cool. So yeah, and that works in both sides. Right? So if I check, if I make this blocked and this block, it will never jump, but the world count will keep going up, right? Perfect. So now what we need to do is, if that happens, because just we can just go down, right? So try and jump in or turn. So 
So we going if we giving uh, we we give we are giving priority to go up. It means that um, if this wall count, yeah, it's going to be super easy. So basically, if the wall count because we know is bigger than one, we're going to try to jump, right? So that means it's two. If we can jump on the other direction, oh, we can go down because of gravity. So it's never going to go over two. So if phi is bigger than two, that means that it couldn't go up, right? So we can do this and then do gravity down. And the difference is that we need to check instead of minus one, we need to check the height of the sprite and check the block while we're going to land. And if that's the case, we do gravity down and we also need to change the Y coordinate to be so we start falling. So we get basically inside the block. And we don't need the dust effect when we're going down. And the runner data we can leave it at zero. And that's it. And because the the uh, the function here of the gravity, this function checks the graph. You know, it applies the gravity independently of you going up or down. We just need to set you know, you know the the character is falling, and it will go down one level. Okay, so both sides are blocked, so it's not going to be able to jump, and it will go down. Perfect. think that is working very well okay so that is super simple intelligence that kind of works uh, I have the feeling that we have too many people running around this is kind of starting to be a little bit crowded and the one we need to test a lot now is the run so we can yeah leave it I guess but okay so one last thing to make the runner to look super smart which is not smart at all uh, is so when we jump in up and up up or, da or down we are changing this value to zero we don't do that and we set it to a random value we could be checking we could be changing the behavior quite a lot so i'm thinking um because if we jump up and we set the world count to one uh or when we go down i mean if we set it to, to one what will happen is that the next time it touches a wall, it will jump again, if it can. Oh, but we set that to zero with gravity, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I don't remember right now what we do with that. Uh, I was expecting this to behave differently, right? So it goes up. So one, two. But it shouldn't be doing that, should it? Because we're sending the running data to be one. So 
Yeah, what's going on? So, you know, there's the initial one. So, yeah, we increment. Why is not doing what I expected to do? I was expecting... Oh... Okay, because it's now... Oh no, because it has to increment only one. Let's take a look. We should jump. Go down. Jump. So. That's one thing. And can we make it jump? Twice. Would that look nice? Okay, so we put it here. Uh, no, we need a space right here, for example. And we move the player to here. So we move the camera. Uh, not really, but close. And he disappeared. What? Oh, because it's not what I expected. Uh, okay, this one. So that's zero, then one. Then two, it jumps. No. No, because it's at the next one, yeah. Yeah, okay, and there we go. Ooh, give me a break. Too much jumping. Ah, there's a bug in there. Oh, 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 oh. okay, so. Right, so, 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 so it's not block, but it has to be floor, right? So it's not block, just the one. So, okay, I'm, I'm failing completely at, at words right now, but. So we want to check that. So we want to check that it's not blocked just on top of it. So this one is free. But we want to check that this one is solid, right? Uh, otherwise, this, you know, it's going to jump and it's what we were looking at. It jumped and there was no, no way to go. So it should never do that jump. Let's take a look. And I could have prepared this better so we can see it, but anyway, so it's going to jump there, jump there. And not, it shouldn't be jumping there. There's nowhere to go. Excellent. And it didn't go down because we set in the value to go up. So, but now it should go down. Yeah, it works. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's better like that. Um, I mean, even without the randomness. Yeah, but it can get stuck like that. Hmm.
you can get the stack. Um, all right, let's let's try the random thing. Uh, but it has to be like with weights. It's not all the values can be the same, really. Uh, how do I do random with? Okay. Um, how do we do randoms? Uh, there must be something in the base. Okay, so... No, that's not what we want. Uh, hmm. What is this? Yeah, but I don't want to install a dependency just for a random number, right? Uh -huh. I don't know, I've never done it. A random number in Haskell. And it says... Blah, 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 blah. Random IO. Uh... I or something. Yeah, random IO. First, you need a random seed because new run is a tab IO and not in. You cannot be used a function parameter. So it has function. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. We can just search for random IO. Type. Random IO. And here it would be explained, I believe. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, uh, global standard. Init standard generator. The system, blah blah blah. When it's available, we pull it back to using system. Time as a seed. Um, okay, how do we use this? No idea. I mean, this random IO is good. This is what we want, right? So, something like this. And. Uh, you can put it here. So oh, but it's IO. Aha. Can do it like this then. But it's okay. Because we can do it differently. Um we can just use IO. Man, but it's going. Ah, oh, it's going to be an awful now. Because everything has to be a yo, a yo. So maybe it's not that bad. Uh, update movement. It is update movement. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. 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 So. We're going to be okay. Um, yeah, we don't need this. Sorry. Okay, that is okay now. But then the moment 
it's going to be IO. So you're good, you're good. You're good. And you're not good, but we're going to make you good. And this one and this one. And then please help us. No, we need to import this from some place. So this is in where? Random uh, system random. And why is not offering it to me? Better. That's weird. Oh, because this system random. Wait a minute. It's not part of the base, is it? No, it's a library. Oh. I want to see. I want random. I want random. Seriously, you're going to make me install this. <sighs> this sucks. Is SDL giving me something, please? No. Yeah, I mean, this is not what I'm looking for. So, mono random, generic random, blah 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 blah. Hmm. I was not expecting this, to be honest. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I can add a dependency. This one, people seem happy with it. And what is yet another dependency? Does SDL provide some sort of some sort of random now? It doesn't. Time gives me ticks. Just not random. Yeah, it sucks a little bit. I didn't expect to have a dependency for that. Ah, well, okay. What can you do, really? Um, system random it was. Uh, 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 um. Why see in the Haskell standard library? I'm confused. Haskell platform. Okay, there's another version in here. In Haskell blah blah blah. Yeah, there's a... What? I mean, I'm happy to use this one. Okay. Let's see if we can get away with uh, whatever. Uh. No. No, because if you if you were supporting this, uh, the language server will tell me. But it's not, so I, I I don't understand this. So the Haskell standard library. Um, but 
has dependencies. Maybe it's part of the standard library, but it's not installed. Anyway. And we just want to see if it compiles. No. Okay. But the dependencies is torn out. Okay, so we import that. And now we can do this. We can give priority of what we want to happen. So we can do zero 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 to Maybe. Like this. Um, and it's not happy. <laughs> oh, expects two integers. Then this is not what I want. Um, so, uh, R. No. Can I have a random from a list of? Um, no, that's just one. Um, do, 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 do. So pure system random. Fine. Okay, system random. I want be able to give values to get one of them like a choice in python i guess um how do i do that i don't want to provide a range hmm. Look at this. So uniform, what does it mean? Uniform range. Uh, unit, uh, standard generator, what is this? Standard random, standard generator, random IO. So random IO, it gives you one random IO. Then R is, gives you a range between two numbers. This is not exactly what I want to do. But. So, picking a random element from a list, close enough, and they suggest Well, so there is no way of doing that. You need to do it yourself. Fine, we can do that. So we can say, um, Random wall count can be zero, 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 two, two, three. And then random can be from zero. So from zero to length of random wall count minus one. Uh, sorry, uh, I have this. Okay, so it's a list of integers. And now, yeah, the family no use. Okay, so now we do 
put here and random wall count cool and when we move down it should be doing the same this mosaic block well I guess no yeah let's do the same it's going to make it all right there you go so now it should feel a little bit smarter I guess Yeah, that's what I wanted. Two jams in there, that was cool. Hey man, you shooting too much. Yeah, it comes down. Nice. Okay, so that was not the value we were expecting, so cool, that's randomness. And uh, not again. Yeah, because it could be a zero. If it's a zero, it's going to be working. Until now it will jump. Uh, and now because it's going to get a different value, it could be that when it touches the wall it may jump. Okay, it does. Now, the only thing is that because it's going to turn around, it can get stuck, but, but that's okay. Then there is a little bit of level design, right? So if I put it here, there is no really a way for it to get out. So it's going to get stuck. So let's put some. Let's see how it goes. But I think it's pretty much done. I mean, this could be a little bit of tweaking, but... Yeah. It works. It's just that this... This structure here, where this guy is stuck, is basically the problem. Although I don't understand why. Should be able to jump down eventually. No, because we gave priority to to wall left right then jump. So there's a chance, but it depends on let me see. Let's see. I mean I think it may get out. Uh, no, it will never get out because it has priority. Yeah, no, it has priority to go down actually. So it should be able to get out. It should be able to get down. You know, randomness. How long is going to take? Anyway, it's not a good structure for this type of money. So, in the levels that I include this, I probably don't want to have this structure. There you go, it did it. Well done, you. That's. I mean, the current context of the intelli uh, artificial intelligence hype we could be considering is that character alive? Because it 
went out, right? That's amazing. It, you know, it has intelligence and stuff. I'm tired. It's late. I think I'm going to leave it here. Let's take a look at the code quickly. But I think pretty much. So. Do I really need that? No. We can increase part of the chain, so. So let's add more stuff and we can amend that commit. So this one, this one, this one. All of them in reality. So. Let's take a quick look to see if we added. Okay, not this one, because this one is actually. No, not showing anything. Okay, so this is the sprite sheet, and it's fine. Um, this is when we spawn the runner based on the map data, which is cool, super simple. Uh, this one is the turn, and the runner data that only has the world count. At the end, ah, we need to fix that. Fine. The map is just processing the runner and and the runner itself. So where are you runner? Let's take a look. And I think essentially it's fine. So yeah, we had to go with IO in here because of the random It's fine, I guess. Could be doing it differently. I think we can actually. Uh, so instead of So in this way, we ask for the random number when we need a random number. But we're doing I.O. here, right? So we could be getting a random number no matter what, and then pass the random number to, yeah, it's okay. I mean, this was wrapped in pure, and now it doesn't need it on this side. And yes, I mean, try to jump in turn. Yeah, we add some extra pures here. But I think this is better because because it only asks for the random number when it needs one. So it will increase the randomness, I guess. Why is in here? Every time we will get a random number. I think it's fine. So. Run enemy. This is everything ready. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I think it's fine. I like it. I mean, this screen is probably not the best to test this type of enemy, but it is definitely working, right? I mean, obviously, if we set the seed, yeah, but I don't like that. I mean, I might set a specific seed, uh, but it's always going to be the same because otherwise it will be too difficult. It will be too difficult because, yeah, I mean, if the player, you know, it, it will, the player won't be able to. Uh, memorized the stage really if it's completely random it's too difficult the idea is that the enemy should always move the same way 
same way. And if the player performs the same moves, the result should be the same. So you can memorize the screen to some extent. Yes. So it's not a good idea to make a battle. But there you go. Cool. Well, that's it for today. I wanted to make it short, but there you go. It was interesting, I hope. Bye now.